My name is John Dawson and I'm doing a video today to demonstrate um, mixing colors for oil painting. We should probably start with um, some basic color theory. The, uh, the primary colors are, uh, as most people know, red, blue, and yellow. The secondary colors which are derived from mixing the primary colors are green, orange, and purple. Then there is uh, the complementary colors. If you were to uh, look at a traditional color wheel, you can see that the uh, colors directly across from each other on the color wheel are the complementary colors. Those colors are uh, red and green, uh, blue and orange, and yellow and violet, or purple. In looking at the color wheel, you might notice that uh, there is a color missing. And uh, as most people know, the and as I mentioned, the um, secondary colors are derived from mixing two of the primary colors, such as uh, blue and uh, yellow make green. When you mix two, the two complementary colors together, uh, theoretically you're supposed to get gray, but that's not the color you get. So let's give that a, a try and we'll see uh, what the missing color is. Okay, I'm going to uh, start by uh, taking a little bit of, um, of red and some green and we'll mix those together and what you actually get in this case, add a little more red and it'll, it'll be, uh, bring out the color a little more. What you actually get is brown. Now brown doesn't exist on the, uh, on the color wheel. And the reason that this is important is really two reasons. One is that uh, when you mix uh, colors uh, together out of the tube, uh, it becomes richer. This brown is going to be a lot richer than uh, any brown that you're going to uh, uh, have that comes out directly out of the tube. And the second reason is, is with most beginning um, um, oil painters, uh, they tend to mix the colors sometimes on the palette, on, on the painting itself, which is not a particularly good idea. And uh, that tends to, um, to cause the, the, the painting to become muddy. They get uh, a lot of brown colors in it. And the, the reason for that is because they're, um, either intentionally or unintentionally, mixing uh, complementary colors together. Let's try one more, just to see the different kinds of browns that you can get. This is yellow and some violet or purple. I think we got a little too much purple. If we did the same thing with um, orange and blue, because orange has so much yellow in it, it's not so much brown as green, but it does kind of a brownish green color, depending on how much of the um, um, orange you put into uh, the mixture. If we go back to uh, color theory for a moment, there are three categories that you need to understand in order to get the effects that you may want. Those are uh, hue, value, and intensity. Hue is easy to understand. It's the color itself, red, blue, green, whatever. Value is the lightness or darkness of the color. And intensity is the brightness of the color. Now the lightness and darkness of the color is achieved in a much different way than the uh, brightness of the color. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate that. Okay, let's talk about value first. 
Value, as I said, is the lightness of the color, not the brightness of the color. We we'll take a little bit of red and get it out of the tube. Now, to make to make red lighter, not necessarily brighter, but lighter, we would add um, some white to it. Now, if you add enough white to it, it, it becomes a color we usually call pink. But the, um, the main thing is, is that no matter whether it's red or blue or green or yellow or uh, orange, <clears throat> white will cause the, the color to be lighter. Now, it's easy to confuse that with brighter. It's not the same thing. If we add enough white to, to these colors, whatever color it is, whether it's blue or red or, or yellow, it becomes a color we usually call pastel. And if we keep adding white to it, it it'll become lighter and lighter. Now, on the same hand, if you want the color to be darker, then you would... Uh, usually add uh, either gray or black, but that's a whole different um, discussion which uh, we'll get into a little later. So next I'll show you how to make it brighter, much a little more complicated. Starting with red again, I'm going to show you how to make the color more intense or brighter. Um, there's usually a couple different ways to do that. If the color is in some way related to yellow, which is the brightest color, you can just simply add a little bit of yellow to the red, and it makes it a little brighter. The more yellow you add, the, more, the brighter it'll get until it becomes orange. The other way to make color brighter is if you have a dark red and you want it to be a little brighter but not a lot brighter, you add a little brighter red. So we have a uh, a little bit of a lizard and crimson here, very dark red. And if I add a little bit of um, a cadmium red light, you get a very rich red that is brighter than a lizard and crimson, but not quite as bright as uh, cadmium red light. When you start using uh, Things that don't have a relationship to yellow, uh, the colors that do, of course, are, are orange, green, and red, really. Um, blue and purple really don't have any relationship to, to, um, to yellow. If you add yellow to either one of them, you're going to get a green color. The best way to make the blues and purples brighter is to add a brighter blue to uh, a darker blue or a brighter purple to a darker purple. In the case of purple, sometimes you can add a brighter red and that would also make it uh, a brighter color. Now, having said that um, adding white doesn't make it brighter, it just makes it lighter, I'm going to contradict myself because in some cases um, white actually does make uh, a color brighter. In the case, for instance, of alizarin crimson, which is a very dark red, take some alizarin crimson, and if we add a, a little bit of white to it, you can see that it gets a lot brighter. And, in fact, In making a color just a little brighter, 
in some cases, adding a small amount of white to it will make it a little brighter. As soon as you add too much white, it's going to go pastel, and then it's not going to be any brighter. In fact, it won't be as bright as you would probably want it to be. So let's say you wanted to paint uh, an apple, and you took uh, um, a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson for the dark side of the apple. This is cadmium bread deep. You add a little bit of um, cadmium red light to that, makes it a slightly brighter cadmium red. You add a little bit of, as we did to this one, a little bit of yellow to the cadmium red light, and there you have uh, quite an array of brightness from very uh, a deep color to a very bright color. You do the same thing with value. You go from a very dark to a very light, but they're muted. They have a uh, more either pastel or a duller look. Well, now we're going to uh, try and mix uh, different kinds of gray. Um, white and black are technically not even colors, but for the purpose of uh, our color mixing, we're just going to refer to them as colors. They, um, when you mix black and white together, um, the gray is a pretty dead color. It, uh, let's do it over here. There's some black. And put on a bunch of white. <clears throat> so, the black and white make a very, um, sort of, flat, neutral gray. It has some its own uses, but it's, um, it's pretty um, lifeless. A little better way to make gray is, instead of using black, use um, Payne's Gray. Now, Payne's Gray is actually looks darker or richer than the black and and when using just straight black and you want it something to even be blacker than black the paint's gray seems like it's even a little blacker than the black paint so a little bit of paint's gray and a little bit of white and what you get really is a kind of a purplish gray It's probably hard to see the difference on the video, but there is a difference. If you add uh, a little bit of black and Payne's gray together, it um, makes an a even nicer sort of uh, rich gray color. <clears throat> now, to enhance any gray that you might make, whether it's... Uh, um, a mixture of Payne's gray and black. One of the, one of the many things that you can do is to add some other color, like um, for instance, uh, um, yellow ochre. And if you add a little yellow ochre to it, and add some more white. You wind up with a, a different, a very different kind of gray. And that's true of all kinds of different uh, things that you can add to it to make the, the uh, gray uh, uh, more, uh, life, lifely, <clears throat> more lively and more interesting. 
Um, another one that's very uh, helpful is, um, if I can find it here, um, Romber. Take a bit of gray, a little bit of white, and a little bit of raw umber, and it has a nice uh, um, tannish sort of gray color that's very helpful to in adding to other colors to, to um, make the value of the color darker. If you add blue to it, of course, you're going to get bluish gray, green, you're going to get a greenish gray, and so forth. Now, um, I'd like to, to take a minute to talk about the use of black. Um, one time I uh, was at a, uh, a class that was given in a community center, and the, the lady told the students to just throw the black tube away. And I understand why she said that. It's because um, about 150 years ago, the Impressionists uh, um, discounted the use of black altogether. They said that that um, the um, shadows were really of colors and so on and so forth. And if you want to paint like uh, the Impressionists do, uh, you probably wouldn't use very much black. But black is a very useful color, and most people don't know how to use it. <clears throat> Put some little black out there. If you take yellow and you add black to it, you'd probably be surprised what you would get. You're going to get a, uh, I don't have enough yellow in it, you're going to get an olive green color. And if you add a little bit of white to that, you can see that it's uh, going to be kind of a very rich olive green. This is very useful in doing uh, landscapes. If we take some red and we add a little black to that, And we add a little white to it to bring out the color a little bit. You get a very uh, nice maroon color. That's quite not, not not quite enough red. There we go. This is a color that's uh, kind of hard to get any other way, this uh, deep maroon. And if it's a color that's useful to you, it's one good way to get it. It's probably the only one of the few, almost the only way to get it. Um, red and blue will also get a nice maroon, but this is a, a, a color that's uh, uh, more easily achieved with the use of black. Um, black and blue, you know, this is good. This uh, makes a color that even the Impressionists would probably have liked. If you're interested in painting landscapes and you want a stormy sky, this is a really nice color to, to use. Add more black to that. It gets uh, darker and richer and have a more stormy color. If you add a little bit of white to it, it uh, tends to bring out a real deep, rich, sort of moody blue. Moody blue. So, okay, that's, uh, that's um, how to mix various kinds of gray and how to use um, black to achieve a whole array of different kinds of colors that you probably couldn't achieve very easily any other way. Concludes this uh, demonstration. Uh, the best way, of course, to um, 
learn about how to mix uh, colors in oils is um, experience, uh, just uh, trial and error and practice. I hope this uh, demonstration gives you a little leg up on uh, how to achieve some of the uh, effects through uh, color and color mixing that you would like to pursue in your, uh, your, your painting and your artwork. We'll follow this up with uh, a few uh, examples of my own work and um, a uh, web address for our website. And um, you can also follow us on uh, a personal and business page on Facebook.